Okay, so hey guys, and welcome to the next part in the F4 Manager Minardi Manager career mode. And this is a different screen, one the uh, the supplier screen, negotiating contracts for next year. And as we've already seen with Paul Stoddart, he wants to cut costs, and Mercedes engines are one of the key components. Obviously, these engines very expensive, but I mean, engines are an expensive component anyway. So I said I wanted to get some new engines, and I had lots of comments. Uh, well, quite a few comments from you guys. Because um, I was favouring Mugen Hondas, and quite a few com quite a few of you commented saying Mugen Hondas. Uh, a couple said for Cosworth, but I reckon I will go for Mugen Hondas. So you're actually going to see me negotiate this. Um, actually, for Cosworths, 93 rating. I thought for Cosworths had a lower rating than that. I thought for Cosworths were like 85 or something in rating. I'll still go for Mugen Hondas, why not? Um, because, no, well, no one's using them. Well, I mean, no one, to be honest, if you look at the list, no one's using any of these. Um, well, someone's using Supertech, but no one's using the top three. Um, so, if we use Mugen Hondas, that means our engines will be slightly worse than Ferrari's. Ferrari's engine rating is 98, and just a reference, Arrow's engine rating is, I think, 55. It's nowhere. So, let's go for Mugen Hondas. Um, max resources, so that's good. Offer contract, so we're paying 22 million for Mercedes engines. Let's offer them 19 million. Surely Honda must be desperate to get it back into Formula One. They won't mind, you know, giving uh, giving us some engines slightly cheaper if it means you know they get back into Formula One. So there you go, we've made that offer. You're actually going to watch me do the negotiations. So that's what you're going to see me confirm in this episode because you're going to watch me negotiate it, and I'll announce. Um, in all of our other aspects of the team, I'll announce them in future episodes. And yeah, we got to find out any other news that comes about. Okay, so we have got some news, just this little one bit of news, and that's that Benetton have confirmed that they're keeping Stephanie, um, or Stefan, I've done it again, Stefan Sarazan as their driver number two. And last episode, there were all sorts of rumours. I think Sarazan was rumoured to be going to... Williams and to I think BAR was it I don't know but he was rumored to be going to some other teams he is staying at Benetton as their driver number two and Sarazan despite having very little experience in Formula One before this um, before this year he has done very well he's matched Barrichello on pace so Sarazan has proved himself definitely to stay in Formula 1 and is driver number 2. Uh, Sarazan's earned that definitely. Okay, so Masao Kimura. I might have butchered the pronunciation of that name uh, horribly. But they've sent us an email back about their engine supply. Hopefully they've accepted. That, that would still be a £1.1 million pound, or dollar rather saving. But, nah, we could do cheaper than that. What about 20 million dead on? That's in the middle. I said 19. They said pretty much 21. We'll meet in the, we'll meet in the middle. 20 million dead on. Hopefully, they'll accept that now. Okay, statement from Ferrari. What on earth could this be? So, okay, Michael Schumacher, no surprise, is staying at Ferrari as a driver number one. And as we saw, I believe it was last episode, it was recently anyway, that Raul Schumacher... He's going to be Ferrari's driver number two next year. So we're going to have both Schumachers because I thought Michael was already confirmed. It turns out he wasn't, but he was always going to Ferrari, wasn't he? He wasn't exactly going to move. So next year, Ferrari are going to have an all Schumacher driver lineup, or at least race driver lineup. So that'll be very interesting to see. And in fact, that's how valued Michael is. Look, 22.4 million. I mean, that's that's as much as our engines cost. So, that's how highly valued Michael is in this game. I think Vic Ackerman, we're only paying him 7 million. Normally, I think the game only expects people to pay about 12 million for him. 12, 15. So, Michael's way more highly rated. Okay, so we've got a reply about the engines. Once again, hopefully they've accepted this time. They're not going to be stubborn with their 20.9. Oh, no, they've accepted the offer. Okay, that's good. So, we've made... Over two million dollars a year saving there, and we've still got very good engines. It'll be 
the second best engines we can buy, the second best engines on the grid, Ferrari will actually have a stronger engine next year, but we should have a stronger chassis. Oh no, they have got Roy Brin this year, haven't they? I think they do have Roy Brin, so... Hmm... It, it could be quite close between us and them next year, but we've still got some good engines, so that's good to see. Right, we got two confirmations here, so Williams confirms Giancarlo Fisichella as their driver too. So, Fisichella, he was at Benetton, wasn't he, in 99, then he was at McLaren, now he's at BAR, and now he's going to Williams. So he's going all over the place, but of course, Ralph Schumacher... Very good driver, has always been Williams' number two driver. Now Schumacher's finally left. They did need to replace him. And I think Fizzy Keller is one of the few drivers left who could be as good as Ralph Schumacher. Ralph Schumacher, especially last season, was exceptionally quick. But I think Fizzy Keller is a good replacement. And we got Neil McEwen as Williams' test driver. Thankfully, he won't be back racing. Although he did get a race win last year, didn't he, at Hockenheim, which was spellbinding um but he's gonna be a test driver next year for williams and a couple of people were thinking that i may have got neil McEwen as my race driver now that would have been that would have been ballsy to get him as a race driver and um, we haven't but i guess i guess it was a good shout he's had experience with ferrari he won a race i guess it was a good shout but no he's going to williams so that's that speculation over Right, we got two more confirmations here. Prost confirm Vert, Alexander Vert, as their driver number two. So, Vert, again, one of these drivers who's always been around the mid to bottom teams. And Prost, don't they? They currently have the worst chassis on the grid, and I don't think they show any promise to be moving up the field next year, so. It's going to be a bit of a dead end position for Vert, but Vert has never really been for with an amazing team this series so there you go and Nuka Pernet still for McLaren I don't understand McLaren this series they've never confirmed anything good really ever since they started apart from the confirmation of Jacques Villeneuve for last year apart from that that's the only good deal they've done and even now they've still announced they're using tag electronics which are pretty poor ones I, f I mean I just find it weird to be honest I don't know what McLaren's doing and they're they're not making progress up the field so and they're not going to next year but at least on the face of it because tag electronics certainly aren't going to help them okay so that was all the news um, there's some more sponsor news kickers who originally sponsored Minardi in 99 have sponsored Sauber and that was really the only mildly interesting thing but we got the Austrian Grand Prix the A1 ring and even though I know we've announced Mugen Hondas for next year we have still got Mercedes Benz engines for the rest of the year which are the most powerful engines on the grid and this track is quite reliant on straight line speed and because we got the straight line speed advantage over everyone else we should be dominant this race it'll be the it would be like the dominance we had in France, where we were several seconds a lap quicker than everyone else. So, we should see a 1-2 for Minardi, and as daft as that sounds, it, it still sounds weird, a Minardi 1-2, when you think about Minardi in real life. But anyway, we should see a Minardi 1-2, unless we have some reliability issues, which is always likely. But yeah, the Austrian Grand Prix should be good for us, and we'll just have to see how it goes. Okay, so these are the practice results, and this is exceptional. Heinz Howard Frentzen is quicker than Michael Schumacher in practice. That's great to see. It's taken Frentzen nine races, but finally he's got to grips with that Ferrari. He's been all over the place previously this season, but Frentzen, nine tenths of a second quicker than Schumacher. Actually, for most of the session, he was a tenth slower than Schumacher. But then, right to the end, nine temps quicker. I mean, that's phenomenal. Hacken's leading it by miles. Uh, Coulthard is six temps of a lap slower. Sh uh, Michael Schumacher, fourth. Fizzy Keller, fifth. De La Rosa, sixth. Stephen Watson, who some people reckon I might have got as my driver for next year. Um, Stephen Watson in seventh. Uh, Lamarie 
not doing very well actually down in 11th place both Stewart's not doing very well either obviously with our former driver lineup and really I think that's it I mean the only other interesting thing is Vert who um, as we saw is going to Prost next year Vert's the slowest it's quite weird to see well not only an Arrow's not the slowest but I mean Sean Lacey this year has regularly been not the slowest uh Genet, even this year with the arrows strengths uh Genet has been near the bottom but well ne at the bottom i should say he is still near the bottom in 20th but Genet was actually only a few tenths of a second a lap slower than a lacy and was actually two seconds well over two seconds a lap quicker than zanardi and verts so Genet's doing very well uh zanardi dreadfully but then again actually the prost Prost do have the worst chassis this year, so can't really blame him too much. And Vert's just absolutely nowhere. Maybe it's because he's realised he's going to Prost next year and he's absolutely dreading it. Maybe that's why he's lost. I have no idea, but we'll just have to see what happens in qualifying. OK, so qualifying for the 2001 Austrian Grand Prix has ended, and there were many predictable results here, but there are still some surprises and some antics happening qualifying, so let's go through it. Mick Hakkinen, unsurprisingly, was the fastest guy in Austria taking pole position and being the only person to dip into the 1 minute 10s all qualifying. His teammate David Coulthard was only a further 3 tenths behind, so it's surprisingly close between Coulthard and Hakkinen. However, what is telling is that Coulthard is really feeling the pressure from his championship rival and teammate Mika Hakkinen, as David Coulthard spun out in qualifying, not due to a car failure, but due to his own driver error. Jeez, Coulthard, what on earth happened there? So with Coulthard crashing out in qualifying, and with it not being down to a car failure, Things really are heating up at the Minardi team and who knows whether Minardi will be able to keep David Coulthard under control or whether he's going to buckle under the pressure from his teammate. Michael Schumacher predictably is in third place but what isn't predictable from the last eight races is that Heinz Howard Frenton is only eight tenths of a second slower than his teammate Michael Schumacher so Frenton is finally stepping up to the plate making the most of his Ferrari and is almost challenging Michael Schumacher. In fifth place is the Williams of Ralph Schumacher and his teammate is also stepping up to the plate and challenging him as Stephen Watson is in sixth and sets a lap time half a tenth of a second slower than Ralph Schumacher so while Ralph is still on top it's a very tight margin. Giancarlo Fisichello is in seventh in the BAR with both Jordans of Della Rosa and Trulli in eighth and ninth. Patrick Lamarri is in 10th, Villeneuve in 11th, Salo 12th, Eddie Irvine a lowly 13th, although he is ahead of his fellow countryman Damon Hill in 14th. The Stewarts and McLarens are a good 1.5 seconds clear of the next car, which is the Sauber of Alexander Wurtz in 15th. Both Benettons have a disappointing session with Barrichello 16th and Sarazan 17th. Zanardi in the Prost finishes 18th with Deniz in the Sauber 19th. Both arrows, despite showing promise in practice, are nearly making the back row, with Jean Alessi 20th and Marc Genet 22nd. The only guy separating them is Olivier Panis. Okay, so here we are on the race strategy screen, a one-stop strategy, that's what I like to see. Sure, you get heavy fuel loads, but when we're so much quicker than everyone else, a one-stop so you're behind traffic less often is very good we can pull out a gap go into the pits come out maybe behind some traffic sure but then we'll just be able to pull away again knowing we won't have to stop so that's always what i like to see i like the one stop strategies um because it's relatively low tire wear so thank you ross braun for that information that's why we that's why we hire him um better than uh mike gascoigne that we had last year who was a little bit mm, last year I mean, good in real life, but, God, in this series, Gascoigne was... Although, Ross Braun, we're starting to wonder, can he build a reliable car? We don't know, but he's definitely good at doing his technical job, which, obviously, he's famous for in real life. Um, dominant performance for us. 
need I say more? Now, Frentzen, can he score? I know it sounds ridiculous. Frentzen in the Ferrari, you thought that's a match made in heaven. But can Frentzen in the Ferrari finally score some points after nine races? I mean, you assumed it would have happened after the first, second, absolute most third race, but Frentzen's had some shocking reliability. We'll have to see whether that's changed. But... I mean, we've had some shocking reliability as well, to be honest. We'll just have to see how the race goes for us and for Frentzen. So let's just see the start of the race. So we'll tell both our guys to hold position. I don't really see why we would need to risk um, telling our guys to push. Especially as we put our guys and risk everything in qualifying. And they uh, they both actually retired with a driver error. Mika Hakkinen did as well, actually. But they both set their risk everything lap, so it was no big deal. But they both crashed due to um, a driver error. Um, Schumacher is staying ahead of Frentzen, I do believe, although they're both dicing out behind both Minardis. So it's an all Italian team uh, top four, which is predictable knowing this series, well, knowing the 2001 season. Actually, no, Schumacher's behind Frentzen. So Frentzen has got ahead of his teammates. Is Schumacher going to repass his teammate? No, he's not. Frentzen. Frentzen, there you go. Come on, Frentzen, in third place in the Ferrari. This is what I want to see. I like Frentzen as a driver. He was, well, he was a very good driver. Make no mistake of it. Why he's done so poorly this, this season is beyond me. I mean, he hasn't even scored any points this season. And I think he did pretty well in 99, in this series' 99 uh, season. So I have no idea what's going on with Frentzen. So there you go, but Hackman's pulling out away from everyone. Coulthard was reasonably close on pace, especially in qualifying, so we could see them battle it out together. And someone did actually comment saying that they're getting sick of Hackman domination, which I don't blame them. I mean, Hackman, what's he on? 70 points? I think Schumacher's on only 29. I think Coulthard's only on about 26. So if you guys do want me to bring in team orders... To... God, that was nearly a crash between a McLaren and what was that? Was Anne Arrows? How on earth has Anne Arrows got ahead of a McLaren? Okay, that's weird. Is Schumacher gonna get gonna get past Frentzen now? Heading up into the first corner. I think Frentzen's gonna hold the place, actually. Very close, actually, but Schumacher and Frentzen, epic battling there. But as I was saying, if you guys do want me to enforce team orders and make Coulthard be closer to Hacken and you know, tell Hakkinen to slow down. I'll be happy to do it, because someone did comment saying they were sick of Hakkinen domination. I'll leave it for this race, but if you guys comment down saying, you want me to enforce team orders, you want me to try and get Coulthard to win the Drivers' Championship, I'll happily do that. But, anyway. One more interesting at this moment in time is Frentzen. I don't think he's going to hold third for the rest of the race. No, he's not. I want him to get a points finish. Fourth. I'll, ha I'll be over the moon if he gets fourth. I mean, Frentzen, as I said, scored no points. Which is staggering. But, still. Frentzen's got to hold out Ralph Schumacher. He's a good 20 seconds ahead of Ralph Schumacher. So, I think Frentzen's quicker. Yeah, Frentzen is quicker than Ralph Schumacher. So, Frentzen should, at the very least, finish him fourth. Unless he... Retires. Yeah, Frentzen has also had a few driver errors this year, so we've got to watch out for that. At least he out of an engine failure, which is bad for Arrows. We know they don't have a massive supply of engines. It's happened again. I don't understand what's going on. Why is Frentzen... We know Ferrari favour Michael Schumacher. I'm not going to blame them for favouring Michael Schumacher. But how come Ferrari can build a very reliable car for Schumacher and then a very unreliable car for Frentzen? I know it happened to some degree in real life, but not to this extreme. Frentzen has... I mean, there's been a few races where Frentzen could have scored points, but he's... I think he's only finished about two races this year because he's always been out... Most of the time, a car failure. Sometimes, to be fair, the, with a driver error. But hmm, I just I feel sorry for Frentzen. I really 
properly do. And because of this, I don't think he's getting a drive next year. He hasn't been rumoured with anyone. He hasn't been confirmed with anyone, I don't think. Obviously, he's been replaced by Michael's brother. I don't think Frenton's going to get a drive next year. And it's not his fault at all. But anyway, actually, what I was going to say, Coulthard is pretty nip and tuck with pace um, with Hakkinen. And there was one race in real life, was it 98 or 99, where Coulthard and Hakkinen collided in the first corner for McLaren. That hasn't happened, luckily. But, um... But Coulthard, he's a bit slower than Hakkinen, but closer than we've seen in other races. But I'll leave it. To, I'll leave them to battle it out this time. If you want me to enforce team orders, as I say, leave it down in the comments. Eddie Irvine out of a barge or failure. So Irvine, another driver who's been a bit unlucky this series. Obviously, in '99 with uh, with Ferrari as well. But I mean, even he wasn't as unlucky as Frenton is now. Oh god, we got Sarazan out with a suspension failure. Panas out barge or failure. Salo out of a driver error. We didn't see that that often when Salo was with us. Um, in 2000, that's what I was thinking. BAR, well, Fizzy Keller out of a fuel error. We rarely see fuel errors. Um, apart from in Malaysia last year, the last race of the season. That was, that was very odd. Um, well, engine and fuel errors for us. Well, for us it was a fuel error, everyone else was an engine failure. Oh, uh, Schumacher, of, Ralph Schumacher out of an engine failure. Okay, he's not... He's been a bit unlucky there. De La Rosa is up into 4th place. So De La Rosa in the Jordan has been quicker than Lamarie in the BAR and Villeneuve in the McLaren. So De La Rosa has actually done very well. Truly proves himself to be very quick in Monaco. But De La Rosa has proven himself to be very quick now in, um, in Austria. Uh, but it's been a dominant race for us. I mean, look, we're... Well, I mean... Hacken and Coulthard, only a 25 second gap, which in this game is not massive. It sounds massive and in real life it would be, but it's not in this game. Stephen Watson out of an engine failure. God, that's unlucky for him. Really unlucky. Two engine failures for Williams, and they use Super Tech engines. I'd be worried if I was Super Tech. Because who's going to want a Super Tech engine after this race? And truly out of a driver error, just after I was praising how quick he was in Monaco. Where is Hakkinen? So there's Hakkinen, he's got oh, a large portion of the lap to go, but it's a very short lap in Austria. And I think this will be a shorter episode than usual we see this series, obviously still a long video. I mean, to anybody who's watched this entire series, I mean every single episode, I commend you because... I mean this series has been going on for over a year, I believe I started it in January last year, so this is... A series that's been going for a year. It's nearly ended, but if you've watched all of these videos, I commend you because wow. I've watched Let's Plays like all the way through that have been about 50 videos long, but normally they're only about 15 20 minute videos, not 30 35 minute videos. There's Hacking and blitzing it past Verts. I mean, that's that shows the difference between the Minardi and the Sauber. Uh, but Hacking is going to come around the last corner and Hacking is going to win. The Austrian Grand Prix for Minardi, that is fantastic for Hakkinen. And Hakkinen has now extended his championship lead even further over Michael Schumacher and David Coulthard. Of course, Coulthard in third in the Drivers' Championship at the minute. I think he might take second in the championship. He might not, but he definitely could take second in the Drivers' Championship, overtaking Michael Schumacher as Coulthard finishes second. David Coulthard finishes second. So there you go, and Minardi 1-2. We haven't seen too many of them due to reliability issues. But uh, but yeah, Coulthard might well overtake Michael Schumacher in the Drivers' Championship. Uh, Schumacher in 3rd place. We then got Villeneuve in 4th, Lamarie 5th, and De La Rosa in 6th with Damon Hill just finishing outside the points while well, 2 laps off. But, you know, he was 1 place off. A points uh, finishing place, which would have been good to see for the former Minardi driver, but 16 points, 1-2, only 20 seconds apart Hakkinen and Coulthard, so yes, I know people c complain about Hakkinen domination, but Coulthard, sure he crashed out in qualifying, so did Hakkinen as well. Coulthard's getting closer to Hakkinen, so that's good to see. 
But anyway, um, Hackathon first, Coulthard second, Schumacher third, Villeneuve fourth. That that's a pretty formidable top four right there. Uh, Lamarie fifth, Delarosa sixth. Who was the last finisher? Zanardi, typical. Um, Genet in tenth. What about Sarazan? What happened to him? Oh, a suspension failure. Okay, because of course we got uh, two real life Minardi drivers on the grid: Sarazan and Genet. Of course, Sarazan only did one race, but still. And then Genet. I do feel sorry for him. Maybe I should have signed him. I mean, maybe you know, I don't know. Maybe I should have got him in. I've basically just spoiled it now. In case anybody was wondering, I haven't got Genet. I may. I've just accidentally spoiled it there. But no, I haven't got Genet for next year. Actually, he might already be confirmed to be staying at Arrows. I can't remember the future for Genet. But Minardi dominated Austria. Um, yeah, 1-2 victory for us. Okay, Myers is deceiving me. I thought I said something about Jean Todd there. And I'm like, what? Jean Todd? Um, the wrong team. But no. Pierce Luton rules, of course. Manager for Minardi, not Jean Todd. That's the wrong team. But Jean Todd's not happy, to be honest. I mean, his his team can only build one reliable car. But anyway, race support, Ross Braun. Yes, Ross Braun, you built a reliable car for one of the few times in this series we've got both cars finishing. That was a regular occurrence in 99 and 2000. Hasn't been this year, but we're still the dominant team. Uh, they've got a ton of money there, 4.8 million prize money. And... Okay, actually, Ferrari are winning the aero development race, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, BAR were there with the suspensions, we're there with the chassis, engine, brakes and electronics. But in terms of aero development, Ferrari are on top. And then again, of course, they got Rory Brin, and Rory Brin is slightly better in terms of re research and development of new parts than Neil Oatley is. So it's expected that Ferrari would be... On top of that, but then again, Fry haven't got an amazing chassis this year. But there you go. Anyway, let's have a look at the driver standings. Actually, no, okay. Coulthard hasn't overtaken Schumacher. In fact, Coulthard is now only on 26 points. I thought he was already on 26, but anyway, uh, Coulthard's still a way off Schumacher, but look, Hackenden, 80 points. Actually, I don't think Coulthard could win the driver's championship. Right, how many more races have we got left? We got six more races, am I right? Germany, Hungary, uh, Belgium, yeah, Germany, Hungary, Belgium, Italy, Europe, Malaysia, Japan. Okay, 70 potential points for any driver to get. Coulthard could still win the Drivers' Championship, but it would require him to win every race and Hakkinen. Basically, if Hakkinen retired every race, Coulthard could win. Um, Schumacher could win. I mean, the season's not over. People can still overtake Hakkinen. I mean, theoretically, Trulli could still win the Drivers' Championship. Everyone below Trulli cannot win the Drivers' Championship now. De La Rosa and below can't win it. Constructors' Championship. That's domination if ever I've seen it. 106 points. Next nearest team, Ferrari, who can only build one car. They're essentially a one-car team on 33 points. That's the problem with Ferrari. If they had two reliable cars... Maybe we get some competition from them. Maybe, but... Well, anyway, um... Yeah, we haven't won the Constructors' Championship. By no means have we won it at the moment, but... Of course, we're going to win it, but we haven't mathematically won it already. Uh, manager rating... I'm way ahead of everyone else, um, because we've built... We've created a dominant team. Craig Pollock for BAR second. Ron Dennis, despite his... Stupid confirmations for engines and etc. is in third. Eddie Jordan fourth. Well, at least EA rate him highly. Well, I mean, Eddie Jordan was an okay team principal. He was an alright team principal, wasn't he? Frank Williams, though, a good team principal, was rated the worst. So, mm. But then again, actually, didn't they both have an engine failure? Well, that's not the fault of Frank Williams. That's the fault of Supertech. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, next race is the... German Grand Prix, our engine supplies home race, and uh, and that's it actually. It's our engine supplies home race, it's the track which on paper favours our car the most. Massive reliance on straight line speed, it favours our car the most. And of course, 
what was I going to say? Of course, well, of course, nothing certain with this track. In 2000, Neil McEwen won. And, wasn't it Damon Hill was overtaken by Johnny Herbert? Literally within the last two seconds of the race. Hill, I think Damon Hill was going to take fourth or fifth. And Johnny Herbert took him away from him on the start-finish straight. That was an exceptional race last year. One of the best races last year. Can it be one of the best races this year? We'll have to find out next time. So I'll see you then.